said. Well said indeed, Mahamati. Again thou hast indeed spoken well, Mahamati. Not only is he himself doomed to ruin because of his notion of greed, anger, and folly as existent and yet as not existent, but he ruins even the character of the Buddha, the Sravaka, and the Pratyeka Buddha. Why? Because the passions are not to be taken hold of innerly and outwardly, because they are neither different nor not different. Mahamati, greed, anger, and folly too are not to be taken hold of innerly as well as outwardly. They have no substance of their own and they are not to be admitted. Mahamati, as there is no reality in the nature of greed, anger, and folly, he who fails to understand this is the one who ruins the character of the Buddha, Sravaka, and Pratyeka Buddha. The Buddha, Sravaka, and Pratyeka Buddha are by nature emancipated as there is in him no cause for being bound and binding. Mahamati, on the other hand, where there is a state of being bound, there are the binding and the cause of bondage. And yet there is one who talks thus, that is, denies causation. Such is doomed to ruin. Mahamati, this characterizes nihilism and realism. This is stated by me in accordance with the deeper sense. It is better to cherish the notion of an ego substance as much as Mount Sumeru than to have the notion of emptiness derived from the self-conceited view of being and non-being. One who is conceited in the view of being and non-being is indeed doomed to ruin. Those who are delighted in cherishing notions of individuality and generality fail to understand that an external world is nothing but mind itself and has no reality. And as they do not understand this they regard things external as transient. For they suffer every moment changes which follow one after another. Now splitting, now dividing, while the skandhas, dihartas, and ayatanas succeeding one another and combining with one another, now come forward and now pass away. They who thus disregarding words of the scriptures are given up to wrong discriminations are also doomed to ruin. So it is said. 9. As far as the duality of being and non-being extends, there is the realm of intellection. When this realm vanishes, intellection completely ceases. 10. When the external world is not grasped as real, there is neither causation nor reality. There is the essence of suchness, which is the spiritual realm of the wise. 11. Those who believe in the birth of something that has never been in existence, and, coming to exist, finally vanishes away. Which leads them to assert that things come to exist, things pass away, according to causation. Such people have no foothold in my teaching. 12. It is not by the philosophers, not by the Buddhas, not by myself, not by anybody else, but by causation that being obtains. How can one talk of non-being? 13. When being obtains by causation, who can bring about non-being? By reason of the wrong views based on the doctrine of birth, being and non-being are discriminated. 14. When it is realized that there is nothing born, nothing passing away, there is no way to admit its being and not being. The world is to be regarded as quiescent. 63. At that time again Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva requested of the Blessed One, saying, Pray point out to me, Blessed One. Pray point out to me, Sugata. Pray point out to me, Tathagata, Arhat, fully enlightened one. Pray tell me, most excellent one. What is the characteristic of the realization by which I and other Bodhisattva Mahasattvas, becoming thoroughly conversant with its meaning, may quickly attain the highest enlightenment, and, relying upon themselves, will not be led away by any speculations or philosophies. Said the Blessed One. Then listen well, 
Mahamati, and well reflect within yourself. I will tell you. Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva said. Certainly, I will. And gave ear to the Blessed One. Thereupon the Blessed One said this. There are two ways of characterizing the realization attained by all the Sravakas, the Pratyeka Buddhas, and the Bodhisattvas. The realization itself and the teaching about it. Now, Mahamati, by the realization itself is meant that it is the realm of inner attainment. Its characteristic features are that it has nothing to do with words, discriminations, and letters. That it leads one up to the realm of non-outflows. That it is the state of an inner experience. That it is entirely devoid of philosophical speculations and the doings of evil beings. And that, destroying philosophical speculations and the doings of evil beings, it shines out in its own inner light of attainment. These, Mahamati, are the characteristics of the realization. Now, Mahamati, what is meant by the teaching concerning it? It is variously given in the nine divisions of the doctrinal works. It keeps one away from the dualistic notions of being and non-being, of oneness and otherness. First making use of skillful means and expedients, it induces all beings to have a perception of this teaching so that whoever is inclined towards it, may be instructed in it. This, Mahamati, is the characteristic of the teaching. Let, therefore, Mahamati, you and other Bodhisattva Mahasattvas exert yourselves in this. 15. Realization and Teaching, Self-Attainment and Doctrinal Instruction Those who have an insight into the difference will not be led away by philosophical authorities. 16. There is no truth in any object that is imagined by the ignorant. Deliverance is where there is no objective world. Why is this not sought by the speculators? 17. The world of the Samskritas is observed as the continuation of birth and death, whereby dualisms are nourished, and because of this perversion the truth is not perceived. 18. There is just one truth which is nirvana. It has nothing to do with the manas. The world seen as subject to discrimination resembles a plantain tree, a dream, one a vision. 19. No greed there is, no anger, nor folly either, and again, no personal ego. From desire start the skandhas, which resemble a dream. 64. At that time again Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva requested of the Blessed One, saying, Pray tell me, Blessed One, pray tell me, Sugata, regarding what characterizes wrong discrimination. Blessed One, tell me as to the how, what, why, and who of wrong discrimination, which, when rising and going on, constitutes what is known as wrong discrimination. That is to say, to what kind of thought is the term wrong discrimination applicable? Or what kind of discrimination is to be called wrong? The Blessed One said, Well said, well said, Mahamati. And again, well said, indeed, Mahamati. You who have been admitted into the order of Bodhisattvas. Mahamati, think of this matter which is worth asking about for the welfare of many people, for the happiness of many people, because of your compassion for the world, for the benefit of the multitudes, for the welfare and happiness of celestial beings and humankind. Therefore, Mahamati, listen well and reflect well within yourself as I tell you. Certainly, blessed one, said Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, and gave ear to the blessed one. Then the Blessed One said thus to him, When the multitudinousness of objects is wrongly imagined as real and attached to, discrimination goes on evolving. And, Mahamati, 
as people are attached tenaciously to the notion of grasping. As they have not ascertained in their minds as to the nature of the objective world which is no more than the mind itself. As they have fallen into the dualistic view of being and non-being. And. Mahamati. As they are nourished by the habit energy of the views and discriminations of the philosophers, they perceive the multitudinousness of external objects as real and become attached to them. And for this reason a system of mentation, mind and what belongs to it, is discriminated and is spoken of as real, and with the assertion of an ego soul and its belongings, the system goes on functioning. Said Mahamati, as you say, blessed one, when the multitudinousness of external objects is wrongly imagined as real and attached to by people, discrimination goes evolving on. And they fall into the dualistic view of being and non-being, when they nourish the views and discriminations of the philosophers which are based on the notion of grasped and grasping. And as they perceive the multitudinousness of external objects as real and become attached to them, a system of mentation, mind and what belongs to it, is discriminated and is spoken of as real and goes on functioning owing to the fact that the external world is not recognized as nothing but the mind itself, and that the multitudinousness of things is tenaciously clung to as subject to the notion of being and non-being. This being the case, blessed one, the multitudinousness of external objects which is characterized with the dualism of being and non-being, is to be said neither existent nor non-existent, and does not render itself to the formation of the philosophical views. Inasmuch as the external world owes its existence to discrimination, it in itself must be said to be devoid of all forms of dualism. Blessed One! In the same way, the highest reality is declared to be devoid of all forms of logical analysis such as the means of proof. Sense perception, syllogistic arguments, illustration, reasoning, etc. How is it, blessed one, that while, on the one hand, the discrimination of multiplicity is said to go on operating on the strength of the attachment which attaches itself to the multiplicity of external unrealities. The attachment, on the other hand, to the highest reality does not give rise to discrimination which goes on functioning in its own way. Is it not, blessed one, unfair reasoning on your part to say, it gives rise to discrimination, in one place, and to say in another place, it does not. 2. According to the blessed one, depending on and attaching to the dualism of being and non-being, there evolve views characteristic of wrong discrimination as when the magician produces varieties of people that are not at all real and complete objects. Thus signs of existence and non-existence are falsely imagined and go on so imagined. But in fact existence itself is devoid of discrimination. If so, how does one come to cherish the dualism as held by a man of the world? said the Blessed One. Mahamati, discrimination, indeed, does not evolve, nor is it put away. Why? Because there is no evolving of discrimination as regards being and non-being. Because the perception of objective realities is not real. Because all that is seen is to be recognized as nothing but the mind itself. Mahamati, discrimination does not evolve nor is it put away. But, Mahamati, for the sake of the ignorant who are addicted to discriminating the multiplicity of things which are of their own mind, it is said by me that discrimination whose first function is to produce effects takes its rise owing to the attachment to the aspect of multiplicity as characteristic of objects. How otherwise? Mahamati, can the ignorant and simple-minded have an insight into the mind itself which they discriminate, and see themselves freed from the notion of an ego and what belongs to it, and also freed from the wrong conception of cause and effect? 
and, again, how can they recognize that there is nothing but mind itself and cause a revulsion at the inmost seat of consciousness? How can they have a clear perception of all the stages and attain the inner realization of the Tathagatas? Which transcends the five dharmas, the three svabhavas, and the idea of reality as well as discrimination. For this reason, Mahamati, I state that discrimination takes its rise from our attachment to the multiplicity of objects which are not real. And that emancipation comes from our thoroughly understanding the meaning of reality as it is and also the meaning of multiplicity of things which evolve from discrimination. So it is said. 20. Those who, regarding the world as evolving from causes and conditions, are attached to these notions as well as to the fourfold proposition, fail to understand my teaching. 21. The world cannot be predicated anywhere as being, or as non-being, or as being and non-being, as is discriminated by the ignorant who regard it as subject to causes and conditions. 22. When the world is seen to be unpredictable with such notions as being, non-being, or being and non-being, a change takes place in the mind, and egolessness is attained. 23. All things are unborn, because they are born of causation. Anything that is born of causation is an effect, and from an effect nothing is produced. 24. From an effect no effect is produced. If you assert this, you commit the fault of a double effect. And this double effect being untenable, no existence comes from an effect. 25. When the Samskrita I, E, anything produced is regarded as free from the dualism of depended and depending, there decidedly is mind only, and hence my teaching of mind only. 26. The mind as norm is the abode of self-nature, which has nothing to do with a world of causation. Of this norm which is perfect existence and the highest Brahma, one I speak. 27. An ego soul is a truth belonging to thought construction, in which there is no real reality. The self-nature of the skandhas is also a thought construction as there is no reality in it. One the Chinese all have, the pure, for this. Does it mean, the absolute, cleansed of all dualistic impurities? 28. The sameness is of four kinds. Individual forms, cause, the coming into being, one and the sameness of non-ego is the fourth. These are subjects of discipline for the yogins. 29. There is a state which is removed from all philosophical views, free from imagined and imagining, of no attainment, and of no birth. This I call mind norm. 30. Of neither existence nor non-existence do I speak, but of mind only which has nothing to do with existence and non-existence, and which is thus too free from intellection. 31. Suchness, emptiness, realm of truth, the various forms of the will body. These I call mind only. 32. Multiplicity of objects evolves from the conjunction of habit energy and discrimination. It is born of mind, but is regarded by people as existing outwardly. This I call mind only. 33. The external world is not and multiplicity of objects is what is seen of mind. Body, property, and abode. These I call mind only. 65. At that time Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva said this to the Blessed One. This is said by the Blessed One that the Bodhisattva Mahasattva and others should not grasp meaning or reality, Artha, according to words. But, blessed one, why should not the Bodhisattva Mahasattva grasp meaning from words? What are words? What is meaning? Said the Blessed One. Then, 
Mahamati, listen well and reflect within yourself well. I will tell you. Thereupon said Mahamati the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Certainly, blessed one. And gave ear to the blessed one. The blessed one then said this to him. Now, Mahamati, how is speech produced? Depending on discrimination and habit energy or memory as the cause. There is the conjunction and the distinction of sounds and letters, which, issuing from the teeth, jaws, palate, tongue, lips, and the cavity of the mouth, make mutual conversations possible. This is speech. Now, Mahamati, what is meaning? The Bodhisattva Mahasattva is said to have grasped meaning well. When? All alone in a lonely place. He walks the path leading to Nirvana. By means of his transcendental wisdom which grows from learning, thinking, and meditation, and causing a revulsion first at the source of habit energy by his self-knowledge, abides on the stages of self-realization where he leads a life full of excellent deeds. Further, Mahamati, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva who is conversant with words and meaning observes that words are neither different nor not different from meaning and that meaning stands in the same relation to words. If, Mahamati, meaning is different from words, it will not be made manifest by means of words. But meaning is entered into by words as things are revealed by a lamp. It is, Mahamati, like a man carrying a lamp to look after his property. By means of this light he can say, This is my property and so is kept in this place. Just so. Mahamati. By means of the lamp of words and speech originating from discrimination, the Bodhisattva Mahasattvas can enter into the exalted state of self-realization which is free from speech discrimination. Further, Mahamati, if a man becomes attached to the literal meaning or words and holds fast to their agreement in regard to the original state of Nirvana which is unborn and undying, the triple vehicle, the one vehicle, the five dharmas, mentation, the three svabhavas, etc. He will come to cherish views either affirmative or negative. As varieties of objects are seen in Maya and are discriminated as real, statements are erroneously made, discriminations erroneously go on. It is by the ignorant that discriminations thus go on. It is otherwise with the wise. So it is said. 34. One those who following words, discriminate and assert various notions, are bound for hell because of their assertions. 35. The ego soul is not with the skandhas, nor are the skandhas in the ego soul. They are not as they are discriminated, nor are they otherwise. 36. The reality of objects is seen being discriminated by the ignorant. If it was so as they are seen, all would be seeing the truth. 37. As all things are unreal, there is neither defilement nor purity. Things are not as they are seen, nor are they otherwise. 66. Further, Mahamati, I will tell you about the features of Jnana and Vijnana too.